back with the program, the big story from the telcos world on the African continent as uh, Airtel Africa's IPO initial public offering north of 700 million US dollars initial offering on the London Stock Exchange. Then we're going to have a Nigerian part of that. Listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange is set for July the 4th, if all go well or as planned. Now the book runners are doing their business. The book runner said on Monday about $200 million worth of pre-IPO had been uh, done. A further investment or investor's order of $100 million. Things look on track, but a few questions are being asked about the Nigerian side of this offering. Let's bring Victor Chiazza, who's the head of research at FSL Securities, to the conversation. It's live to us from the trading floor at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Good morning, Victor. Uh, thanks to have you on the show. Yep. Yeah, Boston, it's always great to be here. Thank you so much. Great to have you on uh, the conversation. Thank you almost all the time. Now, bring us up to speed about this IPO. Give us just about one minute background out of it, as it were. Um, okay, uh, good for the market. Airtel is coming uh, to the market to list, and uh, this time it's not going to be a listing by uh, introduction, as we've seen over the years uh, with the companies that have come to uh, list on our market. So right now, uh, currently, it's going to be at a listing by introduction. Sorry, a listing at an IPO uh, as against the listing by introduction. Now, an IPO strictly means that uh, the company is uh, issuing new shares. Uh, outside the shares that are held by existing shareholders and um, the market ha can actually have a bite of this uh, uh, be a, have a part of the company, be part owners of this company. Now, Airtel, uh, what they've done, they're doing a dual listing, they're doing a listing in London and they're also going to be doing a listing here uh, in Nigeria. We're looking at the prospectus, we've seen that um, they are actually said they're going to be uh, doing a book building with a price ranging from 363 Naira to uh, 454 Naira. Uh, that's about 80 pence to uh, one pound. And um, they've also said they'll be uh, offering about 500 million to about 700 million shares to the market, depending on where um, that price settles after the book building. Uh, as we speak now, the book building process is going on, and I, I think it's going to close by 12. So from tomorrow, I think the modalities around the dynamics of the, the, the IPO is going to be out the exact price at which um, the, sh the IPO is going to be offered and the offer size. Uh, for this um, offer, uh, Etel has actually said uh, they're going to be listing their Etel Africa, Etel Africa, not Etel Nigeria, uh, like uh, MTN did. They're going to be listing, unlike what MTN did, they're going to be listing Etel Africa. And they've actually said this um, offer is going to be strictly be going to be for high net worth investors and uh, um, uh, institutional investors, unlike um, trading out to retail market. Uh, Victor, I want us to bring this down a little bit to the local market. If Airtel is listing Airtel Africa, not the Nigerian unit, which means like Seplat, uh, Petroleum, what we have, we're going to have on the London Stock Exchange is exactly what we're going to have on the Nigerian stock market, stock exchange where you are. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. You're but, correct. But, but in what, terms what, what, what Sepla did um, in 2014. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, what, what Sepla did in 2014 is uh, more or less similar to what uh, Airtel is about to do. Uh, in 2014, Sepla did a, a dual listing as well on London and in Nigeria. And um, for the Nigerian um, IPO, uh, they offered it uh, between five, about 535 to 700. Near, uh range uh, through book building. And after the big build, book building process, I think for Seplat it actually uh, was issued that um, the price was offered at 576. And for, at that point, there was actually a minimum subscription they had for HNI and a minimum subscription for institutional investors. For HNI, I think the minimum then was 25,000 units, while for HNI, for institutional investors, it was 85. HNI was actually 25 institutional investors was 85,000 units. And that amounted to about 14.5 million naira for HNIs and about 50 million naira for institutional investors. I think that's what's going to play out uh, for this ETA IPO. And I expect uh, from tomorrow, tomorrow where the modalities will be given to the market, I expect them to uh, tell us the minimum upper amount. At least know that the minimum amount you need to invest, have to invest uh, with this IPO.
the, the pricing is, is, is different in, 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 in pounds and, or in pence. Uh, it's not going to be up to one pound, at least for the London Stock Exchange. If you do the conversion into Naira and what have you, that's going to be 300 thereabouts, close to 400 Naira, if you look at it in local currency units. Yes, it's going to be about four, about 450 Naira if you, if you convert it. To local currency but like 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 i said earlier it's going to be a book building process so it's going to be uh where uh the institutional investors and the hni decide and where they feel the, the stock is actually valued at that way they're going to peg the price at and actually uh bring it to the market to make to make an offer just in one minute or so what exactly is book building process okay uh book building process is, is a process where uh, high net worth investors and uh, institutional investors come around and uh, they, they do evaluation on the company and, and they look at uh, the company and say, okay, this company is going to be valued at between uh, 363, 500 naira. Now, we want you guys to place a bit. At what price do you guys really want to have this offer? So everybody begins to, to put their bid, and uh, once the bid is, is put in, the company that is uh, issue, offering the shares takes the price and that price becomes uh, the price that um, is going to be offered to at the market. Now once uh, that is done, after the IPO and once uh, um, the, 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 the offer gets listed to the market, the dynamics of uh, demand and supply comes into play where once the demand for your shares are on the rise, you begin to see the share price go up and once uh, interest uh, regarding the, the company it's not uh, as significant uh, enough to push the price up. You might begin to see the price uh, drop. Uh, in terms of ETL, I think what, what they're trying to do is that they really want um, uh, high net worth investors that actually understand the market, understand the dynamics of investing, and are ready to take the risk of whatever they're going to be, wherever they're going to put in their money. Because the truth is that if you look at their um, ETL's accounts over the last three years uh, that has been made available to the public, uh, for 2017, 2018, uh, the company didn't do so well. Uh, net profits were down for the for the period um, 2017 and 2018 as well. It was in 2019 they were able to post about 450 million uh, US dollars in terms of profit. In terms of shareholder net assets and shareholders fund, that actually also be negative. Uh, 2017 shareholders fund were negative. 2018 shareholders fund were negative. 2019, they were able to return that to a, 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 a positive position for the company. So I think uh, what they're trying to do is that they want to restrict this investment to people that really understand the dynamics of investing so, so that uh, we don't have issues or cases where people feel that they've been shortchanged after investing in a company like Airtel Africa. Okay, so that is part of explaining part of the concerns I've seen on social media, on Twitter, saying, look, why would Airtel doing an IPO that is for institutional investors and high net worth individuals only because by the definition of an IPO is should be for every man on the street. Uh, definitely both. Uh, an IPO should be for every man on the street. But the truth is um, there's always a limit set for every IPO. Either the, you're, you're, you're told that you have a minimum, you have to have a minimum fraction of 10,000 units uh, or 20,000 units or 5,000 units or 10 units. So a minimum is always set. So for Airtel, I think they have said that they want to uh, set a minimum for the HNI or institutional investors to come and pick this um, shares. The truth is that after this IPO, whether or not uh, they set at a higher price in terms of the band limit, immediately the stock is listed, it's going to bring liquidity is going to come into play. If you want to buy 10 units, you want to buy 20 units, you want to buy 30 units, you want to buy 100 units, you want to buy 1 million units, you're going to be able to have access to the, 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 the shares on the, on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So if you don't have that much uh, uh, capital in terms of Naira and Kobo to invest at this IPO, I think uh, what uh, you might actually be able to do is wait for it to be listed, and hopefully it's going to be listed on July 4th, from then, you can actually uh, talk to your brokers to actually buy you uh, a bit 
of this um, uh, the, the shares of the Airtel, Airtel Africa that's going to be listed on the Yes, the, 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 the IPO, the listing is coming just uh, perhaps a few days after some folks are getting their salaries. So if they don't have 10 million naira to be part of the book building, each and I, they can do 10,000 naira. Uh, so, which means that from July 4th listing, we'll see, like I said, liquidity. We'll be able to see those who want to sell from the HNIs and the uh, institutional investors who want to put some volume, the float that is required on, on the floor, so that we don't essentially run into the kind of, um, of uh, issues that we had uh, with uh, MTN, uh, a direct listing, or what you call uh, listing by introduction. Listing by introduction. For, for MTN, uh, I, would, I would like to state that the MTN transaction didn't flaunt any of the NSE or SEC rules because uh, the dynamics surrounding listing by introduction, uh, MTN actually uh, played by the rules. And the truth is, until pricing is right for whoever is holding that um, shares of MTN, that is the only time they will feel they are ready to sell. And like we saw in the market, at the time the price of the stock was listed at 19 era, we didn't see that much liquidity. But immediately it got to about 140, 150. It started seeing uh, a lot of outflow people started offering their shares for sale and you've noticed uh, currently at the market I think the, the share price has found its level now what's going to uh, responsible for price appreciation for MTN and Nigeria is going to be uh, quarter on quarter performance and I think going forward uh, investors need to be really informed as to the dynamics of whatever offer is being offered to the market either it's an IPO either it's a right issue either it's a listing by introduction so I need to understand uh, where they stand uh, regarding such investments. Okay. Um, I, I think that is how capitalism really works. If I'm holding the shares at uh, the beginning, the ha price has to be right for me before I will say, uh, 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 Victor, you can take it from here, uh, uh, pay this amount of it. And that's what the market, market is all about, isn't it? The holder, the one who is buying, it's an interplay of demand and Definitely. supply. And if the price is right, if the price is right, Definitely, once the price is right, once the price is right, you get what you need. But the truth is, like I said, once the dynamics of demand and supply comes into play, the pricing is going to find its level. What you're looking at is long-term uh, revenues, long-term profits, what the company has to offer in terms of dividends to shareholders. And once I believe that uh, it meets my investment objectives at this certain price, I'm going to go in. And once it doesn't meet, I decide to exit. So it's a demand and supply play and as well as... Uh, your ability to understand uh, where the market is going to be going in the medium to long term to decide on whether you're going to be offering uh, to buy or you're going to be offering to sell. But uh, we're happy that Airtel is actually coming to our market. Uh, currently, with the listing, currently, uh, shares outstanding is currently about 3.08 billion shares outstanding. And then if they offer uh, the amount, which they say are going to be offering between 500 to 700, assuming they offer about 600. Uh, million. It takes the shares of standing to about uh, 3.6 billion. Market cap uh, of about 1.4 trillion uh, naira. That's significant for our market. That's going to that's going to be about 10 percent of our market cap now. So we have about we have Dangote, we have MTN, we have Airtel uh, controlling over 10 percent individually of the market uh, cap. So I think it's good for our market. We we actually encourage other uh, blue chip companies to come to the market and actually uh, bring liquidity to the market and bring debt to the market. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Victor Chaz. This is the world of telcos. Let's welcome the telcos. We asked them to come. And here they are, flying in through our windows. Thank you so much. Definitely. Uh, we'll get in touch with you uh, perhaps on July the 4th. Uh, when the listing is actually taking place, if all go according to plan, then we'll need to uh, do a lot more breakdown here. Thank you so much, Victor Chaz.